Hello everyone, welcome to another tutorial series on our channel. In this one we are going to be taking a look at RabbitMQ together with Spring. We are going to be creating a basic Spring project that is capable of sending and receiving messages via RabbitMQ. In this video we are going to be setting up our RabbitMQ server on our local machine and before that we are also going to install all the needed things to have that server running. So let's get started. First, we are going to download Erlang. It's a programming language in which RabbitMQ was written and it's needed to be able to run the server locally. I will be providing all of the links in the description, so do not worry about that. After download is completed, you need to go through the installation process, which is fairly simple. You just need to click next a few times and that's about it. After you're done installing and of course downloading Erlang, we are going to be taking a look at RabbitMQ itself. I will also be providing this link in the description. It's again a fairly simple installation. First we download all of the things needed and then just go through the installation process. Again you're offered with uh, different options for different operating system. I'm going to go with Windows because I am on Windows and you can choose whatever you have. As you can see during the installation process my Windows Defender was complaining about this uh, file we downloaded but I faced no issue so I just ran it anyway so it wasn't a problem for me. And during the installation you are also offered to install the RabbitMQ as a service which I will do and you can also not do this that would just mean that whenever you want to use it you would have to start the server manually so it's really up to you. Besides that, there are no other configurations. You just choose the uh, folder where you want to install it and click next. Allow a few things through your uh, firewall and that's about it. After the installation is finished, we are going to open up the command prompt as an administrator. So that's an important step. Open it up as an administrator and go to the folder where you have your uh, RabbitMQ server downloaded and go into the bin folder afterwards. There you have option to start and stop the RabbitMQ service and as well you have the RabbitMQ server which you can also start manually or stop whatever you want. Uh, as soon as you install this uh, the service is already running so I will not be doing anything regarding that. But one other thing that I will do is to enable the management plugin which is going to offer us some nice interface where we can take a look at our queues, channels and all fancy stuff. So just copy this command from the link that will be in the description and execute it. And then we're going to use the command line tool, so the RabbitMQ command line tool to check the status of our server. And this will also give us a port on which this interface is running. We can see it here, 15672. So we're going to open that up in our browser and log in as a guest guest. So the username is guest, password is guest. And here you can see all of the nice statistics, all of the connections, channels, exchanges, queues, whatever we want. So everything is here. We are going to be exploring this uh, later on. At this moment, we are basically done with the installation of RabbitMQ. Now we're going to move to setting up of our Spring project. I'm going to be using the Spring Initializer page where we can easily set it up. So here you just have to enter some of the things. You can enter here basically whatever you want uh, or you can just copy paste whatever I did. Make sure that you have Java installed on your PC. If you do not have it, uh, I will be offering uh, another tutorial video on how to set it up. It's really simple, so don't worry about that. And from the dependencies, we are going to add only RabbitMQ as we don't need anything else. After you're done, just generate your project and extract it somewhere and open it up with IntelliJ. Again, if you don't have IntelliJ, the same video will explain how to get it and how to install it and set it up. Again, it's fairly simple. Now we can just start our project and yeah, it's an empty Spring project that doesn't do much. It just has a dependency to RabbitMQ, but we are not actually using it here. And by default, IntelliJ will run this with Gradle, which maybe we do not want, so you can change that so that it's run uh, with IntelliJ itself. We can easily modify this setting, so it's not really an issue. So here you can, for example, see how it looks now when I run it with IntelliJ. To modify it, go to File, Settings, and then inside of the Build, Execution and Deployment 
submenu, you have the Gradle submenu, and here just change these two drop downs to IntelliJ and click OK. And that's about it. The IntelliJ will run the project and not Gradle. So that's everything for this video. I will see you in the next one.